Hi everybody, I am back. I've been away for a little while. Um, actually, the last time I did the Watch Me Wednesday was on June 12th. So it was three weeks ago. Well, yeah, about three weeks ago. Hey Kristen, how are you? So it's been a little while. Hi Pam, how are you? Welcome in. So, um, and I kind of wanted to update you on what's been going on, why I was away three weeks, and now um, I, I was on episode number 81 when I left, and now I'm on episode 82, but it's been three weeks. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Hey, Kathleen, you made it. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> finally, I love it. Hey, Jean. So before I left, um, I told you I was going to Shipshawana, Indiana, to teach with Judy Niemeyer and I had a fabulous time. So that's one of the reasons why I wasn't there the first week. Second week, I was away in Wyoming for a whole week with my entire family celebrating my parents' 62nd wedding anniversary at a dude ranch. Yup, you heard me right, at a dude ranch. It, we had a fantastic time. It was nice getting caught up with my brothers and his family. And my children flew in too, so we saw everybody, which was really cool. Um, and we spent a whole week there in Wyoming. And we had fabulous, fabulous weather, which was unbeatable. Um, and so that's where I was the second week. But when I was in Wyoming... I got a little bit of a sore throat and a little bit of congestion. I was feeling fine, but you know how that goes. You get a cold and you get a little congestion and all. But, so I came home, was home Sunday through, you know, Wednesday. Well, actually, yeah, through Wednesday because then last week was 4th of July. So, but that Wednesday, I had put up a note that I couldn't do my Watch Me Wednesday because I literally had lost my entire voice. No talking, um, which was so strange for me because as many of you know, I am such a talker. Um, I was literally down to a whisper. Let me give you a piece of advice. If you ever, ever want to get somebody's attention, just whisper because it catches their attention. So um, my husband, although he was a happy man for like a couple days because I couldn't talk his ears off, he had to listen a lot harder because he couldn't hear what I was saying. It was too, too funny. Um, so my voice stayed hoarse for a few days. And I found, as you know, as you can hear, I've got my voice back. It's a little rough still, but it's back. Um, but then in the meantime, so I did something that was completely epic. I have to share it with you. I am so proud of myself and actually proud of all of my friends and my husband. Um, we all went on the 4th of July. We've had it planned for a long, long time. We all flew to Denver on the 4th of July and drove to Leadville, Colorado. And we hiked the highest mountain in Colorado. But yet, wait. It's not just the highest mountain in Colorado, it's the second highest mountain in the lower 48 states. We made it to the top and it was an awesome experience. We hiked up Mount Elbert and it's at 14,440 feet in elevation. It was a long day. It took us 10 hours to go up and back and it was amazing. I, it was a, a an experience of a lifetime that I will never forget. And I did it with my husband. My husband, one of his dreams is to hike all the high points in every state, with the exception of about five, because they're technical climbs. This was his number 36, and I was there for it. So right now, I have about 15 high points under my belt, so to speak. Um, he said he'd backtrack with me to get the ones that he's done already, but it was a fabulous experience and we encountered beautiful weather. It couldn't have been more perfect, uh, no clouds. And literally we were up in, in where the clouds would be. It was amazing. The views were phenomenal. Um, it was very emotional. The altitude obviously made it a little bit harder to breathe, but we all did it. Um, 
and it was just great, great time. And I still am reliving it. You can tell, I don't know, by my enthusiasm. But anyway, so that's what I've been up to. I hope you've all had a fabulous three weeks. I do want to talk a little bit about some quilty kind of fabricy stuff. So enough about what I did. Um, does this mean, Deborah? Funny, does this mean Mount Everest is an eventual bucket list? No, never Mount Everest. It's a technical climb. But I will let you in on a little secret. My husband hiked Kilimanjaro in 2005, and I am setting out to do the same thing, hopefully within the next few years. But we'll see. We'll see. So cross your fingers. I just want to do it with a group of people that I know have my back and I have theirs. So... So that's uh, the highest non-technical climb that you can do in the world. It's 19,000 some odd feet. Um, I will never do a technical climb. I don't want to use um, pa uh, picks and axes and ropes, none of that stuff. That's not for me. I just want to be able to walk up it <laughs> with poles. That's it. Anyway, so, but in my travels in the past few months, one of the things uh, that question that comes up a lot is, gee, Jackie, besides your own fabric, when you go out and shop, what kind of fabrics do you like to look for? Of course, I love my own fabrics. I love my batiks, and I love batiks in general, but of course, I use uh, um, my own fabrics a lot, as you know, because I've shown you a lot of them. Um, but when I go into a quilt shop, there are a few things that I do look for, and I'm going to show you. I have... I have collected over the past probably month and a half or so uh, fabrics from shops that I've stopped in in my travels and I want to show you what I've kind of picked up. I've folded them neatly and they will get put away um, and hopefully eventually used because um, they will go in quilts. So a lot of you know that I love black and white because you have my book Splash of Color, uh, Rainbow of Brilliant Black and White Quilts. So one of the things that I do always do is I look for black and white fabrics in quilt shops. So here is some of the white and black fabrics that I got. And I love, first of all, I love words. So I have words. Um, oh, Lori's daughter did Mount St. Helens in 2017, 98 degrees. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Um, oh, I am so sorry. I can't see the rest of it, Lori. Um, the rest of you know. I have to read it when I'm done. It's just a short little note. Um, but anyway, so I like um, words. I always look for that. And of course, look at there's little kitty cats and dogs. Isn't that cute? Um, and then this one's like a campfire. It's got like mountains and stuff. Um, I'm more kitty cats. So these are kind of things that I look and definitely more words. Um, I love the words. Love words. So those are some of the whites that I've collected in my travel that will go in my stash. And then I've got some blacks and whites. And similar, you've got like words and things, or chemistry, little mountains, because I love to climb mountains. Um, more words, alphabets, etc. cetera. Um, these I thought really look like mountains too. More words, um, a little uh, Halloween. So those are some of the black and whites that I've picked up on my travel. Some of the other things that I picked up on my travel is I, and I know a lot of you know how I have this love affair with fabric from other continents. Africa, I love African fabric, true authentic African fabric and true authentic Australian fabric. So there was a place when I was teaching in Dallas um, that had a shop that had Australian fabric. So of course I picked up some African fabrics or not Afri Australian fabric. Sorry, everyone. Um, so I picked up some of these and I have an extensive, see, aren't they beautiful? The pattern and the print on Australian fabrics. So, um, Beth wants to know how many yards do I get at each? Great question, Beth. So you typically when I'm collecting black and white fabrics, I typically just get a half yard because I tend to like to use those uh, scrappy. I like to make quilts with black and white uh, scrappy. If it's something that I super duper really love, I'm going to um, get more. I'm going to get about a yard or so. But if it's something I really, really, really love, um, I get more. I usually get three yards or more. 
So I don't know if that gives you an idea, but if it's something I know that I'm gonna use as a scrappy, uh, it, you know, just I want like little bits and pieces of it, I just get about a half a yard. Sometimes even a fat quarter, but typically not, typically half yard. So anyway, so that was the Australians that I picked up, okay? Then these I actually haven't gotten yet to fold and put in groupings because I put my, I store my fabric in groupings. I usually store by color. So then I can go and just pull out a color I need. And a lot of you, if you go back in some of my videos, you can see my storage um, where I took you in and I showed you how I store my fabric. So you could see that and I do store by color. Um, so these are some fabrics that I just picked up. That, uh, I just thought they were really pretty um, and they are kind of coordinating fabrics. They're, they've got pink, which, gosh, I can't stand pink. <laughs> if you know me, pink is like one of my favorite colors. So um, I just picked these up and I love figs and I loved that um, they had a fig print. And of course, lime green goes great with pink. So those are some coordinating fabrics. And then as I just told you, gosh, I can't stand pink. So I had to pick up all these pink fabrics, right? <laughs> so, and they're kind of fun. There's a, that fig print again, and um, just pink again. It's just like lots of different shades of pink. Um, there's more figs, more figs, and some flowers with the pink, and then just some geometric type with pinks. Um, and just a, a tone on tone. So I love pink and pink, by the way, this hot pink goes fabulously with blacks and whites, right? Don't you love it? So I picked up a lot of pinks in my travel, just saying. Um, it just attracts me. Do you have like a, hey, there's Scott. Hey, Scott, good to see you. So do you have like a favorite color when you walk into a quilt shop that you're like attracted to and you kind of go to it like a magnet and then buy the fabric up? Let me know. So then another um, thing that I like to collect um, is striped fabric because striped fabric is great for sashing and binding. Um, just fabulous. Oh, and borders too. Um, and so I collect those actually, it, back going back to that question that Beth had, how many yards? So striped fabric, I typically um, pick up at least a yard um, because if you're gonna do binding, if you're gonna use it in binding on a quilt, depending on how large the quilt is, you want at least a yard. So I would rather, I rather err on the side of having more for the stripe than less because if I'm like, oh, this is a perfect binding, but I only have a half a yard and I need three quarters of a yard, I'm gonna be pretty bummed about it. So, oh, I like some of the colors that are coming through. Blue, purples, awesome pinks. Um, so anyway, oh wow, this is funny. Okay, I, fold, I must have picked these up in two different places. This is hysterical. So see this stripe I picked up, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Apparently, I picked up the same stripe somewhere else. So that's too funny. I must have liked it that much, right? So that's one of the stripes that I picked up. So let me show you some of the others. I'll hold them up individually. Here's, here's one that I picked up. It's a, a green and kind of purpley stripe. Love it, love it, that'll go somewhere. This one is kind of like, well, it's a rainbow, but like it's an, is that beautiful? So I consider that a stripe because it, you know, depending on how you use it, um, it'll, work out super nice in any quilt. And then this one is an Australian, but look at it, it's a stripe. So I love that, had to get that. This one, you're gonna love this, love, love, love this. Um, these are kitty cats, but look at how they're made. They're made like stripes, they're elongated cats. How fun is that, right? So that's a stripe as well. And then of course, this is a K-facet print, but it's a stripe. Love that stripe. And then this one, love the colors in that too. Very cool colors. And I did a couple posts yesterday on cool and warm colors. So those would fit perfectly with a cool quilt. And here are some warm colors. It's the same fabric, but just different colors. And then this is the same as that green and purple that I showed too, but it's like those hot, uh, warm colors, right? So those are some of the stripes that I picked up. Then, 
Um, I also picked up a couple novelty fabrics just because I had to. So if any of you know me, I love my cowgirl boots. So I had to get this. Now, I don't know what I'm going to make with it, but how fun is it, right? I have very few novelty fabrics, but I thought this is super fun. I can even do like a little purse or a little bag or something that can hold things in it. Um, so I might do something like that. And I also like sloths. So I picked up these two sloth prints. Aren't they super cute? Super cute. So the sloths are on the tree there and these are just the sloth faces. Aren't they sweet looking faces? So those I picked up. So those are the novelty prints that I picked up. And then I just picked up some super fun fabrics that I love. Um, so in the vein of the black and white, if you have my book, I talk about black and white fabrics that I collect because I like to pair them with color. But I also have a collection of black and white fabric that actually have the color injected into them. And this is what I mean by that. So here's a black fabric. It's primarily black, but it's got the color injected right in it. I try to collect fabrics that look like this, um, that either appear to have the shape of a spot or a dot. And I have quite an extensive collection of them. So when I find something like this, I usually buy about half a yard. Then just some super fun fabrics. It's another one of K facets, um, but it's fun. It's, I like that fabric. And then this, I just love the yellow, the yellow and pink together. This I actually bought, I think about three yards, because I think I might make a top out of this or a sundress, I'm not sure. But I bought enough because I thought that would make a really pretty um, garment. Then some just some more fun fabric. This also I would consider a stripe, but it's fun. It's a K-facet fabric. And that's really fun too. You can see that I gravitate, obviously, towards the brights. Um, another fun fabric. And this one is super fun. Um, isn't that fun? It's a Robert Kaufman, but I love, love, love how fun it is. And you can cut it in various parts, um, parts to isolate certain colors. And then another, this is a Philip Jacobs. And that's kind of what I bought in my travels while I was away. So yes, I do stop in quilt shops and I do look for things other than my own fabric. Of course, it's a thrill for me when a shop carries my fabric too. So. Um, that's an awesome thing. Um, oh, and I have a couple other things. I got a freebie for you. Yes, I've got a freebie for you. But first I want to tell you, a lot of you, I have to thank you all for um, your good thoughts and your prayers um, for my little quilt inspector number two. He was sick when we got home. My neighbors, my really good friends and neighbors who took care of our cats while we were away hiking Mount Elbert, um, had called me on Saturday. We were still away. We weren't coming home till Sunday. They called me Saturday and they said something wasn't right and that he was hiding under the desk and he wouldn't eat or drink and made us really concerned. Um, but they kept looking in on him and I did post a little thing about him because on Sunday when we got home, we got home in the afternoon, we took him to the emergency bed and he had a fever of 104.2. And uh, apparently cats, normal temperature is anywhere between 100 and 102. So he was running a high fever. He, he was sore like in the tail area too. Anyway, he didn't, he, when we came home, he was still under the desk. He wouldn't come out. Um, uh, so we were concerned and we took him to the vet. They said that um, they would advise us to take him to the vet the next morning. So Monday, I took him to his vet and his fever had dropped, which was awesome. And without having to run any diagnostics, um, they decided the best thing to do at that point, because he hadn't been eating and drinking, was they gave him 300 cc's of fluids, a shot of that. They gave him an anti-inflammatory shot and an antibiotic shot. Well, when I got him home, that was just enough to get him to eat that night. So he did eat that night. Not everything, but he ate. And then yesterday, he ate even more. And today, he's back to normal. So um, whatever it was, whatever one of those shots it was, took care of it, took care of whatever problem it was. So 
He is all better, and I thank you all for your support, your love, and your prayers for him because we all know our fur babies, they take over our hearts, and they really are one of our family. So thank you so much for all of that. Now, I want to tell you about this freebie before I go because I think you're all going to like it. So, um, and I'm going to put the link for the freebie pattern above me when I'm all done, okay? So back in, well, it was last year. Um, I don't remember exactly the time, but anyway, I made a quilt and wrote a pattern for Viking Husqvarna. A lot of you know that I am a Viking brand ambassador. And I did a, they launched um, their new lines of machines back, I believe it was April or May, and I went to their convention and taught. So anyway, there's a pattern that I created and designed for them for the launch of the new machines, but it is free to you. And it, all the instructions are there. It is a card trick quilt. This is the quilt. Now, I t I'm gonna tell you right now, that I know you can't read it on here. I tried to, to, to mirror image because there is a function on here that every time I do a, a video, I can flip it and mirror image so you can read. So don't worry about reading this now. Now, it wouldn't work today for whatever reason. But this pattern is totally free. I'll put a link to it. It has all the yardage you need. I wrote the pattern all the yardage. It has all the graphics on it that you need to make this little... Um, while hanging, you can see the graphics are there. And I can't remember, I don't know if we wrote, see there's more graphics. I printed it all out. I will I will um, put the link to it for you. It's a wall size quilt. Now, I'm not sure the, the, the um, dimensions have to be here somewhere. But anyway, it is a wall size quilt that you can make for free. Um, I would love to see somebody make this in my um, fabric lines too. That would be awesome. If you go and you grab this link and you make the quilt, please post it for me or send me a message with a picture of it because I would love to see it and then repost it. That would be awesome. So I will put the link for you. I hope you all like that. And it's I'm glad to be back and good to see you all. I missed you for the three weeks I was away or incapacitated <laughs> because I had no voice. But thank you for being patient with me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And yes, I will be here next week, unless of course I lose my voice again, which I'm hoping not to. So we'll see. Anyway, hey, listen, happy quilting all. Thanks for joining me today. Have a wonderful day. Love you all. Bye-bye.